And we welcome you into the seventh edition here of the Mountaineer Puck Drop Preview here on the Mountaineer Hockey Network. Uh, I'm Cameron Bellotti, and joining us today is Rue. How you doing, Rue? I'm good, Cam. How about yourself, buddy? I'm doing good. So, one-on-one, you know, I really feel like we're turning the page with your team as the new semester began. You know, that tough loss to IUP, you know, two high-scoring matchups this past weekend, 8-6 loss to Duquesne, which you maybe should have won, and then Case Western, a clear-out dominance win 7-3. So it really feels like you're turning the page here. So looking back at the Duquesne game, what happened in that game? Um, I think that you know, we came out, I think with the young group that we've got, one thing that we're struggling with is consistency. Um, and I think that kind of reared its ugly head on, on Saturday. Uh, definitely a weird weekend because we're supposed to play Cleveland Friday, Duquesne Saturday. Uh, with the weather, we ended up playing um, – case in Cleveland on Sunday. So we went to Duquesne, came out pretty well. I thought we played a really solid first period. Um, and I think we got a little big headed for ourselves in the second period and came out. I, I, I mean, like I said, we've got a young group. So I think we came out with a little, a little overconfident, uh, got away from some of the little things we were doing well. And I think that, uh, you know, that put us in a hole. And then we battled back. We played pretty well in the third period. A little sloppy in our own end, but, um, you know, definitely one I think we could have had. Yeah, for sure. And then, so obviously you talked about how you were supposed to be up in Cleveland Friday. You went Sunday. How did you regroup from that? And, like, how did you prepare for that game? You know, obviously thinking Duquesne would be your last game of the weekend. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I guess we kind of – rolled with the punches unfortunately you know that all came together pretty quick so um we had lost a practice last week so we were actually supposed to have kind of a, a quick skate in the morning on friday uh so we practiced thursday night we're supposed to have a quick skate friday morning and then we ended up um you know we were all already at the rink ready uh to get ready to load the bus when we got the call from the bus company that, that, that everything was going to fall through so, um, you know, we had a team lunch, just kind of one, a bunch of guys were already there. We went out and, you know, it, we've got such a tight group. Um, you know, we were all kind of anticipating that a little bit based on the weather forecast. Well, then, you know, that was more of just losing Friday's game than it was, you know, the switch. So then by Friday afternoon, Friday evening, we had figured out that, you know, the, the best time we were going to have to try to reset that game was going to be Sunday. So. Um, you know, uh, we were ready for both teams in the weekend. Um, I, I was pretty proud of the way that we started the game on Saturday. But like I said, got away from us in the second and it was hard to kind of pull it back together. You know, and then that brings up a good point. You know, Case Western, let's look at the positive here. Case Western was a great game. You know, I remember I believe you guys barely lost to them when you guys were at home. What changed from that game to the road game at Cleveland? Um, I didn't think, I, I think that, uh, we were definitely still trying to get our legs under us, um, from the first game. Uh, one thing that we did prepare for is a uh, little bit of a weird situation. They play on Olympic sized ice. Um, and for people who are, you know, newer hockey fans or, or aren't aware, Olympic ice is, I believe, 40 feet wider. So there's a lot more ice to cover, especially in your own end. So we had done a lot of talking Thursday night in practice about, you know, just some of the tendencies we were going to have to do, you know, have to to be able to be successful on that big sheet, as well as, um, you know, some things to be careful of. Uh, and I think we did a nice job of taking advantage of it as opposed to letting it be, you know, an Achilles heel for us. Um, but I just think I think we've come such a long way, even, you know, not as far as we'd like to. But from that first weekend at home that we played case or the second weekend at home. I think we're, you know, we've we've done a lot of growing. Yeah, and then let's let's um let me I'm just crossing off stuff I don't think is relevant anymore. Let's move on to Ferris State. Ferris okay. State's an interesting matchup here. It's a non conference matchup, you know. How do you how do you like, you know, prepare for a game that's a non conference matchup this late in the season? And yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I think our focus, Cam, has been all year just making sure that we're bringing our best and staying consistent to the game that we want to play. And I know that's a little bit of a cliche coaching answer, but uh, I think it's really important for our group. I think we're trying to make sure that, you know, we're bringing the identity and the intensity to the game 
that we want every week. And so, you know, not to say that we don't do a little bit of pre-scout and you always catch me on Tuesday and I haven't really got too far into it because I've been you know, trying to dissect our games from the weekend. But um, I really, like I said, I, as, as cliche as that might be, that's kind of where our focus is right now is just making sure that we're minding our P's and Q's and making sure that, you know, we're showing up with the intensity, the game plan, the, the the habits that we want to have all the time and and then once we've got those all the way down with you know this young group then maybe we can turn focus to you know be a little more specific opponent to opponent but I think when we do it uh the way that we want to we can compete with any team we've seen so yeah for sure and this is the final home season our uh, home series of the season uh luckily we'll be able to go on the road with you as we're still ironing out those details yep uh obviously it's the last home season and that means we have to recognize the seniors you know such a young group i know you only have one senior you want to talk about that for a minute we've got kind of one and a half so oh. we've got matt katz is the only uh true senior and um katz has been just a huge part of of our year one of the most consistent guys that we've had um, always brings a great attitude, great work ethic and cats uh, cats is a, a true senior. So he'll, he'll graduate this year. And I believe he's moving on from school and, and going into you know, the work life. But um, Trey Henry is also a senior this year, but his plan is to uh, come back for grad school and try to play another year as while he's doing that. So um you know, so I don't know whether Trey is going to be recognized in the, this weekend or not, but um, Cats will for sure. Both of those guys were a huge part of, you know, building our program. Uh, the first year that I was here when we added the D3 team, um, but um, the, the year that we added the D3 team, those were two of the guys that uh, jumped on the train with us and, if we didn't have them commit to doing that, we would have been, you know, totally out of luck. Uh, so those those two guys, and and so Trey's been with me all three years. Matt Katz took last season off, but um, Trey got hurt at the beginning of last year, so uh, he missed. A, he he law actually against Fair State in Michigan first weekend of games last season. Uh, and missed pretty much the rest of the year. And then uh, we were missing Katz last year, but he came back for his senior year. So those guys both have just been a huge part of this team, um, even you know being able to exist and then beyond that really uh, our growth. So I'm so thankful for both of them. Yeah, and then uh, you, you talk about the young team. Whenever we have a conversation on the record, off the record, we always talk about how young the team is. And it finally feels like they've started to turn the page and, you know, adjust this college, you know, kind of hockey. How do you maintain that momentum that you've been pushing the last few weeks against Ferris State? And, yeah. Well, I think one big thing, Kim, is, like, I was really happy to see a few really standout performances here in the last few weeks. Uh, so Quentin Miskey is a big example. Uh, Q started the year. And you know was in and out of the lineup, and and has really worked on a lot of the things that I've talked about, and he's made some big strides. Alexander Lurkey's a very similar situation, um, in and out of the lineup, and been cleaning things up for us. Uh, he had a big weekend, I thought, um, as well. Uh, Lou Cassio is a sophomore, but I'm really seeing some him refine some parts of his game that we haven't got to see, you know, quite so. He's maturing as a player, I guess, is a good way to put it. And and so he had a really good couple uh, couple games this weekend. So all of that is progress, you know, on a micro and a macro standpoint. Um, keeping the consistency, I think, um, is just, you know, looking at it the right way. We want to make sure that every bit of time that we spend together whether that be, uh, you know, a practice, a video session, uh, team meeting, any type of uh, – any any game, whether we win or lose. We want to make sure that we're using all of that. Um, we're using the – squeezing every bit of uh, growth and improvement out of any of those meetings that we have. And I think this group's really leaning into that, especially here, you know, down the stretch last semester and, and – and coming back from the break, being a little more refreshed, uh, you know, everybody, we had a long semester last year. It was, I mean, last semester, uh, it was, 
definitely not an ideal situation. So I think that, you know, getting the break and being able to kind of recharge our batteries and get back together uh, with a little, you know, uh, a refreshed flame for, you know, progress definitely is helping. So, you know, just focusing on using every little bit of time that we have to, to make sure we're moving in the right direction. All right. And finally, what are your expectations for this weekend? My favorite question of all time. You know, uh, no crystal ball, but I, I expect to see another handful of big performances. Um, like I said, we've got a bunch of guys that are really doing a good job of, you know, taking on a little more responsibility and, you know, pulling the rope. Um, and so I'd expect that from our group. And I'd love to see, you know, a big weekend, especially for cats on senior weekend. And, and you know, a couple guys building off of a really nice few weeks of work. James Bailey had a couple nasty goals over the weekend. Um, so I'd like to see him, you know, keeping up with that confidence and, and you know, doing something crazy this weekend. So I'm excited to to get back at it. It's been a little bit of a long week. We had an optional this morning because of just the travel situation and everything. So still had probably 16 guys at practice and, you know, worked through some stuff. We got practice tomorrow morning and then we'll have Thursday night to get ready for the weekend. So long week, but the guys seem like they're, they're really rejuvenated. And, and I think they're really psyched to come out of the weekend with, uh, with one win. And we're, we're really, looking forward to the weekend for sure all right well that'll do it for us here on the mountaineer hockey network make sure you tune in live it's gonna be some good games this weekend i'm cam to and that was uh coach we'll see you next time all right thanks cam see ya